21st of August. What we're going to be covering today is, of, of course, just general markets. There's some crazy news politically in the US, which we'll go over. And uh, also we'll go over Simon's Cat. So Simon's Cat had a very successful launch, but it has been marred with a couple of issues. So let's just dive in. So firstly, as per normal, have a look at CoinGecko. What we're seeing is a little bit of a downtrend with Bitcoin and ETH and sold just slightly. We're still in this bull market. I had someone DM saying this is not a bull market. And then they said this is a bridging market that created a term. A bull market is when things go from a low to a high. And that can take a couple of years or 18 months. But we are in a bull market. We're just in the early stage. And within that bull market, we have these sideways movements. So this is all boring, I know. The thing that is doing well, or the sub kind of category are basically rubbish tokens on the Tron network. However, haven't had the bandwidth to look into these. And with Tron, he's got lots of money, but in general, uh, Justin Sun, things will pump up over there. And then they will just, like from my experience, they just, they will become irrelevant very quick. People move in and people move out, but we'll still put some attention on it in case there is some sort of value. Okay, let's, uh, let's have a look at some news now here. So one reason potentially for the Bitcoin price going down is the fact that there is still a decent amount of sell pressure and it can be absorbed, but it can be absorbed at a lower price. So Mt. Gox is still transferring a massive amount of BTC. Some people will be selling this, of course. This is a little bit older, this post this is from July, but you can see like running the numbers, uh, 95K there, 20K to go to credit funds, 10K to a New Zealand exchange, and 65K going to individual creditors. And of course, you know, a lot of them may be deciding to sell. Either way, it's essentially it's tokens that we there's no guarantee that these tokens, that these coins will actually be held. And so there's a little bit of sell pressure. However, we have now a stable coin total market cap, which has reached 165 billion, the highest ever. And you always see stable coins lift up before things kick off. This doesn't go back far enough for us to basically see that, unfortunately. But this is always the case because a stable coin can be redeemed for US dollars. So when the markets get quiet, then or when they start to go into a bear market, you'll see all these US dollars and the, and the actual market cap will decrease because people are cashing them out into actual US dollars in the bank account. So Tether will unwind positions and USDC will, and then others will as well. We also have this graph here, and this basically shows us, or, or chart, shows us the major asset dominance with Bitcoin being extremely high, it's becoming more and more dominant. When alt season pops, and this is why things haven't been exciting, because, because alt season hasn't popped. When it does pop, this dominance will decrease significantly, and then altcoins will go crazy, and then it will reverse. So it'll go like this. You can see it just by looking at this. September 20th over here. I'll just move myself away for a second. Okay, huge dominance. And then more dominance in January, especially in general, like around the COVID time. And then this is around the flash crash. And then from there, it just shrunk and shrunk. And look at this. I mean, this is the all-time high, I guess, with coin price, maybe. No, all-time highs over here. But old season just went crazy, really crazy. ETH increased its market share, but more so altcoins. And then it did okay. And then we went into 2022 and then just started to BTC, just clawed back, clawed back, and it clawed more back. So we will pop. It just hasn't happened yet. Okay. Now there are going to be some people out there that are putting out things like this. This is completely, in my opinion, rubbish. It's just not true. It's a it's a theory, but I don't think it has any any validity whatsoever. And this relates to the 19, the 18.4 year property cycle, which I've covered bef before. And we can talk about at the end of this live stream if you're keen. Are we in a matrix? 2007, it tops and there's a 10% correction and there's a full recovery. September 18th, 2007, rate cuts, market collapses, blah, blah, blah. Blah. Now, we could probably look at the charts of the S&P 500 index and see other times like this. He's just choosing this one, I would imagine. And then this, he's putting it here. There's only one um, like mistake here, and that is, should be 2024. So July 17, and then correction, full recovery, and then rate cuts. And then we're not at that point in the cycle. If this was next year or 2026, then yes, it will be absolutely vicious. But right now, this is still a bull market. That is not financial advice, but that is my thesis. So Jason Pizzino, he points out this as well. So this this is the guy that I learned the 18.6 year property cycle from. This is a friend in the Gold Coast in Australia. Him and his brother have their own channels. And um, basically what, what's happening now is Biden's administration putting a 10k tax credit uh, to people trying to, I guess, get their first home or something along those lines. And it's coming right now. And what we're going to see is crazy price growth in real estate. And that's going to push up all of the markets, but it will come up and then it will be a vicious 
downward movement. And I mean, I don't think this is necessarily going to mean that's going to drop down to this price like that. This could go a lot lower. I think it'll go a lot lower. But until then, it is up only. So if you can buy a house, fine, buy a house. Just don't over, over leverage yourself because it's going to get absolutely brutal. So this is a proposal, 10K tax credit for middle class first time home buyers looking to elevate, alleviate mortgage costs. They did this in Australia, maybe 2021. I think it was like $30,000. And all that we saw was all of the budget first time home owner kind of properties. They all moved up by guess how much? $30,000. So they're like, hey, have $30,000, get your foot in the door. And then everything just went up by $30,000. Like free money doesn't work. We would all like to receive free money, not have to work so hard. It just doesn't work. All right, next bit of news from Nachi. This is someone that my research recently found, Binance top trader, and he's, he has a mini operation, so maybe not full-time on the markets, but he's got these two theses. I've taken some longs off the table. Many altcoins such as Sol and Sui have are having similar structure and seem to be working on an ABC correction as shown. So I believe a great buying opportunity, buying opportunity will occur again soon. So if you like these tokens, this is not that one, Sol, this is Sol. If you like these tokens, you may want to go and set some stink bids down here. And Sui as well. I think Sui could definitely do pretty well, but I haven't actually played with it. Have a look, sorry. Okay, I can't find the Sui uh, chart here. But either way, same thing. If you want to put some stink bids in those things, go for it. I personally, always have stink bids set with Seoul. Now, this is the craziest news of the day. Kamala Harris backs President Biden's 44.6% capital gains tax proposal, the highest in history. The proposal also includes a 25% tax on unrealized gains for high net worth individuals. I don't know the ins and outs of all of this, but um, Topo is always, always over these markets. I mean, this, but this does sound absolutely insane. Like you look at places like UAE where they don't tax you like crazy. And those societies are actually thriving far more than places like this. Essentially, what you're saying is if you work harder and harder and harder and work out what it takes to be successful, you will be penalized. If you just want to try and just chill and be a little bit more, we'll give you money and you'll hopefully survive, then you, you know, then enjoy playing PlayStation and you you won't be you won't be uh you won't be hit. So I mean this is just a proposal, right? It's not going to go through, but I'm just surprised that this is what goes like what goes into the media or just into the world right before an election. This is the time when you want to promise things that you're probably not going to deliver on. Just just crazy news. And the, the biggest issue with this is when you have things like this, you literally just, you lose innovation. Like if Tesla and Twitter's stock price went up, um, I don't know if Twitter is has a stock ticker still or if it's completely private, but if the value of those things went up and then Elon had to go and pay 25% tax, he would literally, he would be bankrupted right? Because you, you, he leverages up his companies in order to acquire another one. And this is what is true of many people. All right, next bit of news. Let's skip that. So voting again starts this week for Jupe. Meow will put out a big post, but we'll go over a bit of a TLDR. Also remember the Jupe plantary call number 25 is today, 3.30 p.m. It's going to go through uh, a couple things. Um, Jupiter's efforts in keeping users safe. Slog will go over DAO votes and a few other things which is fine. Just remember with this, if you have 100 staked dupe and use that wall address and you submit the form at the end for the pop, you have to be fast. There's only like 2,000 people that can actually enter. If you enter that really, really fast, you'll get a POAP. And this POAP is like worth like 0.3 sol or something that you can sell on Tensor or accumulate if you like. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. We're making more content and trying to make this far better. Now, this is the evolution system regarding the new grant system. Fabiano's in a great, great post here. Basically, the, the initial system didn't work perfectly and everything is just about iterating. So grants, DAO members can kickstart their journey through micro grants like Jupe and Jupe done that. Then they work a little bit, they do okay. Then a trial working group, you know, four to six months, and then they go and they actually seek a vote to become a formal work group. Because at present, there have there been a couple of group groups actually formed. They didn't really work out, like Reddit, um, Jupe ecosystem. I'm unsure about the cadets. If they, I imagine they're probably going to continue on. But the thing is, it's worth putting money into these into these ideas. That's completely valid. That's definitely worthwhile. The issue is they're not all going to work out, and this is to be expected. Like if you're a startup company, you'd be spending millions of dollars on marketing, and here you're spending thousands, and not everything will work. Camino news. We've just launched the Camino PYUSD liquidity vault. I mentioned this yesterday. It's um, 20K per month, 5K. I think this is worthwhile, and you can go and claim any tokens as well. Let me just show you where it is. Camino PYUSD, boosted fees. Like this is, this is worth it. In the previous cycle, 
we would see like 200, 300%, and I wouldn't really jump into anything unless it was a certain percentage. One reason why Step Finance became so popular was their token printed at like over 2,000%. It was absolutely insane. And this is APY, so this is, you know, factoring in, or if you were to auto com compound it, not just APR, but it's still properly decent and the TVL is low. As soon as this gets down to maybe like 50% or whatever, probably not worthwhile. The other thing is this hasn't been going for very long, uh, so we probably can't test its performance. But the Camino strategy, this should work pretty well as long as Camino is in this sideways pattern. And I don't think it's going to be going up anytime soon because we, until it starts to reach like five, six billion dollars worth of TVL. Y2 Kappa is on the team, one of the co-founders. Remember, 350 million people, this, this is if you're feeling sad and you should be a little bit sad, our soul bags and everything in the markets are not doing too well. Like the dApps are getting, they're getting stronger. Huge amount of PYUSD is earning 18%, which is insane. Camino is on its way to Tim Billy. Season two, Airdrop gave Manlet's a stimmy before the next leg up. Solana DeFi is alive and well. This random person has said, Camino so low, had to grab a bag. The only Solana DeFi protocol I use, smooth as butter. Uh, so Ave started to catch a bid. Seems like a Solana has all the eyes now of the cycle. Camino seems like a no brainer. I want to point out that I agree but I also want to give a little bit of context. Aave did absolutely fantastically in the previous cycle. They launched, like they got, I think they did an ICO from memory. I can't actually remember. They were first called a Lend, Lend token. And from the bottom to the high was a thousand was X. You put in a thousand dollars, you walk away with a million dollars. And it absolutely just rocketed. And now, of course, you know, it's coming down, but it's still actually jumping up. So if you're going to compare things, you can't compare Aave completely because they've got a lot more TV other on multiple blockchains, all EVMs, of course, and they are the GOATs. Uh, also, we need to do a deep dive into the Camino token itself in terms of the vesting and team allocation, that sort of stuff. But this is still exceptionally undervalued. We just need to work out what can we do with this token that makes it valuable. Can I have a look here? I mean, it launched a little bit higher. It's coming down. It's just, it's still, it's it's fine. I guess what you're probably looking at is you're thinking, um, you know, it, it, will this outperform Sol? That's always going to be the question. And likely, likely it will. Lulo users can now claim Camino Finance Season 2 rewards from our rewards tab. I showed you yesterday, but it didn't work. And the Solana Crypto Calendar shows there's nothing really going on today. Just Drift introduces Bet if you want to give it a go. Reminder with Sanctum and Airdrops, if you... Uh, didn't get an airdrop and you believe you were earnest, go put that in. You're running out of days. And always a reminder, stake your soul with Felt.com. Come stake with us. Don't leave idle soul in your wallet. Marinade has improved their MSOL um, staking or like the return on staking. However, I'm still I'm still letting things sort out. Essentially, they've created a system which makes this a high yielding asset, but it, I think it actually hurts Solana in general because they're rewarding validators that are just extractive validators. They don't teach, they don't market, they don't try to improve the ecosystem for the most part. So I want to see if things change here. I'm going to give them a little bit of time. In the meantime, I'll say if I want uh, a liquid staking token, so that's just what I go with. And now let's quickly go over NX tokenomics. The only thing I want to point out, because I said we'll, we'll discuss it yesterday, well, I said we'll discuss it today, is that I want to point out a couple of things. One, the community incentive is massive, 51%. Uh, the IDO going for 15%. We need to see why well, should we buy this token. And then around 27% of the raise amount will be allocated to form the LP pool just as a bit of an idea. The actual business and development and investor stuff, that's very, very low. Uh, liquidity pool's fine and the team allocation is fine. However, with this investor thing, they say if no strategic investment is secured within six months post TGE, so after token generation event, the tokens will be reallocated to the community. I'm just surprised that they can't find investors this early. That's a little bit strange. Uh, and then Fabiano has this point as well. The, the thing is right now, the go-to action is use NX Finance, be a part of my team, check out the NX Finance video and I'll cover it more and more. Remember, I've got less than a thousand dollars in NX Finance. No shade being thrown on them, just Camino is a safer bet still and we want to maybe farm something or we want to have access to something that may give us an airdrop and we also want the idea that this could grow and become very successful. I don't want to risk too much. I just covered this before. Road to TGE, you can see it like this. Now this, oh, let's jump into some Simon Cat news. This is from Bonk Guy. So basically, Simon's cat did very well. There's a couple of issues. What it, what the Bonk Guy said, and he knows meme coins really well. He's got a very good success rate. Like, of course, some are not going to fly, some are. But half the people in the comments fought me when I first posted about Simon's cat presale. Outlined his thesis. And this is why people stay silent. The thing is, if people, like on my post or anyone, if you have a rubbish viewpoint that's just noise, you deserve to be muted. You don't have to agree, but you need to say why it would. 
So this person doesn't have a rubbish viewpoint necessarily. It hasn't done a proper amount of research either. One thing is he says, um, it will still probably still pump. Ha ha ha. Good launch. Sad to see uni PCs, uni picks taking this path. He was very clear with the thesis and the, thes the thesis has done exactly what it said it was going to do. Now, the issue was there should have been with the investment starting times, champions should have got an investment. But what people were doing is they were going in as masters and then getting $3,000, then unstaking with a 20% penalty and then putting it to a new address and then restaking it, waiting 10 minutes to go up to become, well, like I'm not logged in with this wallet, but master again, and then doing that with multiple wallets. So we never actually got to the champion phase. Now, there's a few things that need to be worked out here. Uh, this one here just relates to the fact that you can't unstake if you actually... You can't unstake if you got an allocation of the cat tokens, you'll lose that. So just be aware of that. The other one is this manipulation. So what the goal is, is running the numbers. We're likely to open a new pool to accommodate more champion holders, even if it means we get smaller contributions, like 300 to 500 allocation. So if you're still in champion, just stand by. In case you miss it, I will link Flocky's Discord below, um, but you should be following them and following me. And I'll tweet it out if something like this happens, because I would want to get even another $300 or $500 allocation with my champion account. And then I definitely want the other people to be refunded that were playing, not playing ball. We covered this yesterday, but this link is below. And remember, uh, this relates to the Flocky airdrop. So you can go buy some Binance specifically on the chain, on the, on the exchange, not the chain, and you'll get a a little bit more of an airdrop. And the official Simon Katz token is this. It's not out yet. Uh, it's not like on, on, on PancakeSwap or anything. So don't go looking for it. Now, there is a, a Flocky trading bot competition. Now, of course, you play you pay fees. So this is probably not going to work out necessarily plus EV, but it could. There is a multiplier on day one and you earn one point for every $1 worth of cat traded. So if you trade back and forth some cat on day one and day two, maybe even day three, you could get an airdrop that could offset that potentially. Just put it on your radar. Not sure if it's going to work. I cover this in this video. It'll be linked on how to set it up. Binance will support the Simon's Cat airdrop to Flocky holders as well. I already mentioned this, but that's why if you're going to buy Flocky, you probably want to go and buy it actually on uh, Binance. And they're also going to be listed tomorrow. Don't know what time on MEXC, which is an exchange I don't use. Also KuCoin. Don't know when Binance is coming yet. Next bit of news. Remember just in general, my favorite meme coin is Bonk. And remember to grow your Bonk Dragon. I'm hoping that we still get an airdrop even if we miss one or two. I imagine that would be the case. Bonk is something that rewards. They take Bonk out of the ecosystem in different ways. Some of it gets burnt. Some of it gets used to redistribute as rewards. The Pathfinders LST NFT mint. I want to hear, do people think I should mint this or skip it? NFTs are quite quiet, but we can always get back our actual soul if we like, or I can sell the token for like probably 0.3 soul. Anyway, they've got a whole storyboard, storybook mint experience. This may be something that you're keen on. I need to see how it's going to play out. But I like that they're trying something new when NFTs are quiet. Uprock has got all mining available. I haven't managed to get it working on my phone yet. And but I like but I like this. I want Uprock to you know produce revenue and I want that token to be utilized and I want them to grow because they have product market fit. It's just taking a little bit longer than maybe they expected. I like that they were able to turn this on. However, this is not making you any money yet. This is, you know, they've got an army of 10,000 ore miners making, you know, nothing yet. But what I want to illustrate, I mentioned this the other day, Pi. This is nothing I'm not recommending in any way, but this came onto my radar like early on. We could have just bought it, of course, but you could mine it. So in 2020, I knew about it. You put it, you, you mined it on your phone, but I didn't worry about it. it just had no use. Um, it had no use in the, in the slightest, but it still pumped up to this crazy all-time high. And then it did another pump up like this year as well. And it's still trading at $37 and they've got a massive number of followers. And my point is, if all can replicate that, and if there's like a, an app like Uprock, which can, you can just leave it idle and it, and it does this and it uses that compute and you earn a little bit and all becomes something worth, I don't know, a billion dollars, $10 billion, that will be worth it. So it could be something that you're keen on. The actionables. Watch my video on Flocky Trading Pot if you're keen. Use it to buy some cat on August 22nd. Attend the dupe planetary call today, 3.30 p.m. UTC, and claim the power up. Remember, you need 100 states dupe, so have that wallet address ready to copy and paste. Claim your Camino Season 2 airdrop and stake them. I'm going to show you that after this. Play some stink bids at 120 to 130 for Seoul, maybe even 110, maybe 100. And DCA Seoul on dupe.ag stellday.com. If you believe like I do that Sol can potentially go to a thousand dollars and just go to YouTube and look at Sol to a thousand dollars. If you're looking at there, you're going to see like last year I did a video on that thesis 
and now there's a lot more videos popping off. I was early. These people are still early. I was earlier. There's no credibility here for me. Just the point is more and more people are seeing that this is a potential thing. It doesn't mean that we won't take profits before $1,000 because that's, that's really risky. And you can imagine $1,000 is such a fat, juicy number that you'd really want to take off. You'd really want to take some, some money off the table. Just want to point out that DCAing sold now, I think it's a good idea. Airdrop actionables. $100 worth of flocking on BNB or ETH or maybe even a uh, getting it on my preference it says the final snapshot is august 29th don't transfer or sell in between apparently uh deposit into computer soul media pool for met points lend usdc on nx finance for fabiano's guide to get that airdrop multiply as well and add and verify your soul wallet to grasp before 23rd of august now that's all for today thanks very much for tuning in i'll catch you in the next video